Synopsis of the prior chapter for any who skipped it. Judy returned to Lizzie's and met the new editor Susie hired. She then discovered an XBD of her assault, recorded by the Death Head Ring who were the ones responsible for it. Unfortunately, she didn't realize it was her in the recording at first, and wound up enjoying it until she discovered the horrible truth. At the end, Bishop, who leads the Death Head Ring, issued a veiled threat to Judy and to V, saying they would see them both soon. This will be the final trigger warning provided for the story, and it also represents the end of the second act. Trigger warning for attempted suicide. I was shaking by the time I finally managed to dig my hand out of my pants and pry the wreath off my head. My scent hung heavily in the air. So that was what they had stuck in my port. A scrolling chip. Every moment, sensation, and thought. They had it all. And now I knew what they had done with it. It was official. I was the newest star of a Death's Head XBD. Sure, I could hope this was the only copy floating around, but I knew better than that. There was an entire black market out there for just this type of experience. My personal torment was now available for sale to all the sick fucks in Night City, and if my own reaction was anything to go by, it would be a smash hit. I was dizzy. A cold sweat breaking out across my skin as I shifted upright and tried to catch my breath. So, what did you think of your debut, sweetie? Dom sat across from me in my editing chair, his hands stuffed right back in his pants like my own had been just a few moments earlier. He'd seen me getting off on it. He was laughing at me, just like they had. I tried to speak but all that squeaked from my throat was an agonizing cross between a moan and a whimper. The sound of my soul finally breaking. What's the matter? Dom asked, stretching back and smiling. Got you a little hot and bothered? Happy to oblige you if you want to have a quickie. He'd laughed at me. No matter how loud the music was upstairs, everyone must have heard the scream that ruptured from my lungs. Before I knew it, I leapt out of my chair and bounded toward him, fists clenched. The first punch connected squarely with his jaw, sending an exquisite jolt of pain lancing across my knuckles. I managed to get in a second blow, though I was slightly off balance, before he snapped out of his shock and tried to grab my arms. Hijo de puta! I was right back inside of that fucking warehouse. Only this time, I wasn't tied down, and there was only one of them. My fists rained down upon him, though he deflected most of the blows as he shuffled off the chair. What the fuck? Dom shouted, kicking me away from him. You crazy fucking whore. It was just a fucking joke. Just a joke. That's what it had all been to them. Some sick way to get their rocks off at my expense and to have a laugh about it afterward, probably while knocking back some cold ones. And now, everyone was in on it. Everyone would know. I lunged at him again, this time resorting to scratching at him with my nails, leaving thin white lines in their wake as I raked at his skin wherever I could. If a pair of cold metallic hands hadn't grabbed and pulled me away, kicking and screaming, I would have torn him apart. My den quickly filled with people. Some of the actresses, Mateo, Susie, probably even a handful of patrons who'd heard the commotion and followed the others, or maybe they were just looking to get their special discount. That's enough. Knock it off, Judy. Susie shouted, injecting herself between me and Dom who was clutching at his arms. Thin beads of blood had risen to the surface of the scratches I'd dragged across his skin. Fuck that, I spat, still struggling against the firm grip I found myself in. Let me go! Judy, stop! I recognized Rita's voice, but it did nothing to cool the blowtorch inside of me. The anger and rage that had been building inside of me for nearly 18 years. And the shame. Rita, get her the fuck out of here, Susie growled, pointing a finger at me. And you, I've had it with your shit. Might not be able to kick you from the mocks, but you've damn sure worked your last shift at Lizzie's, you hear? Get the fuck out. 
she was firing me after that fucking bitch had taken in that BD of me, that XBD? Good riddance, who needs the cunt? Dom chimed in. Can't handle seeing herself enjoying all that dick. Shut up, Dom, Rita shouted back. Susie, you can't, don't tell me what I can't do, Rita. I'm the fucking boss here, and I'm telling you to get her the hell out of here now and get the rest of these people. What the fuck is going on? Oh no. My body was instantly sapped of its energy, and I went limp in Rita's arms as V rushed through the doorway, eyes wide with concern. The steel hands holding me back suddenly let go of me, and I would have spilled to the floor if V hadn't been there to catch me. What happened? V asked as she searched my body for some sign of injury. Jesus, are you alright, Judy? You're not hurt, are you? Will someone tell me what the fuck happened to her? She was so warm. All I wanted to do was lose myself in her embrace and shut out the cruel world around me so it would just be the two of us and no one else. I knew she would always take care of me, even if I didn't deserve it. But I couldn't take care of her. I couldn't even take care of myself. I'll tell you what happened, Dom belted out. The bitch got fucked six ways from Sunday and got pissed that I called her out on enjoying it. Shut your fucking mouth before I shut it for you, V growled. Dom snickered, causing Susie to roll her eyes. I'm not gonna say it again. Anyone who's not on the fucking payroll here, and that don't mean you anymore, Alvarez, better be out the door in 20 fucking seconds. V's eyes snapped toward me. I already knew the question about to spring from her lips. What is she talking about, Judy? I... I got... Susie pulled the plug, Rita interjected. I'll fill you in when we're outside. Come on. My lip trembled. I didn't even have the strength to speak up for myself anymore. And V, she had to be disappointed in me. How could she not? After taking a week off of work thanks to my OD, I had managed to hold on to my job for a whole entire ten minutes. Judy? Don't use that caring tone with me, V. Please. I just want to run away from it all. Sink under the waves of Laguna Bend and hide under my bed like I used to when I was a girl. Don't hold me back. Her eyes were filled with questions, but she refrained from asking them and nodded toward Rita who took one of my arms into her own. The pair began guiding me toward the door. Hey, Dom called out. If your output's ever looking for something a little thicker than those dainty fingies of yours, give me a holler. Happy to oblige you. Dom tugged at the bulge in his crotch. My stomach leaped into my throat, nearly making me gag. V's hold on me loosened as she looked back at Susie. You said she's fired, right? Meaning she don't work here no more? That's right, Susie said, crossing her arms defiantly. And don't you be expecting me to change my mind about it either. There was a blur of motion out of the corner of my eyes, followed by a cool rush of air against my arm where V's hand had been. By the time I could focus on what was happening, Dom was flat on his back and V was standing over him, pounding her fist against his face. Whoa, hey! Knock that off, Susie shouted. But she made no effort to intervene. Neither did Rita, or any of the bystanders, or even myself, as drops of blood splattered across the floor and copper shards flaked off from what used to be his teeth. Finally, V exhausted herself. Heaving for breath, she shook some of the excess blood from her knuckles and staggered back toward me, taking my arm in her hands once more with shocking gentleness. Come on. Let's get you home, Jude. I'd nearly reached the stairs when I burst free from their grip and rushed back into the den. Susie drew away from me like a frightened animal, probably thinking I was coming after her next. But all I wanted was that fucking XBD. I wound up snatching my wreath, virtue still slotted inside, like my life depended on it. I didn't want anyone else seeing it. Didn't want anyone to know. I could feel every pair of eyes seeing right through me as V and Rita guided me through the bar. They all knew. Everyone knew. And not just what had happened to me. That alone, in a place like Night City, wouldn't have raised an eyebrow. It was what had happened to me during it. V seemed to sense my discomfort and picked up the pace as Rita brushed aside anyone in our way. By the time I finally stepped outside... I was bordering on a full-blown panic attack. At least, that's what I thought it was. I'd never had one before, but 
couldn't think of any other reason why my heart would be racing as fast as it was. She can't drive, Rita declared to V. Why don't you take her home in her van, and I'll keep an eye on your bike. You can pick it up sometime tomorrow when you're able to. Thanks, Rita. But can you tell me what the fuck happened back there? I honestly don't know. Got there just a few seconds before you did. V huffed in frustration, but nodded her head. Make sure no one fucks with my ride, will ya? V asked, pointing to her bike parked on the opposite side of the lot. You got it. Go take care of your girl. I glanced at Rita and mouthed, thank you, to which she nodded. There was a longing behind her eyes, which I knew was meant for me. It was incredible. Even after dumping my entire load of baggage on her earlier this morning, she wasn't even up to speed on the latest. And V. God, this would gut her. What was she getting out of all this? V had never struck me as the sort to have a fetish for fixing up a basket case, but the way she'd reacted over the last day made me wonder. Maybe this was her way of secretly getting off emotionally, shepherding me across the lot, whispering words of comfort into my ear and promising to help me carry my burdens. But I didn't want that. Didn't want to throw all my shit onto one person and have them look at me like some sort of damaged thing. But that's exactly what I was. Damaged goods. I'd been that way for so long, I'd even forgotten it for a while. But it had all come roaring back with a vengeance. V stayed quiet as we walked down the sidewalk and entered the parking garage, shuffling the keys out of my jacket. When had she even grabbed it? I certainly hadn't. The silence stretched on as she drove me home. I stared out the window, seeing past the buildings and crowds rushing by, still clutching my wreath in my hands. Happier faces. Better lives. It wasn't until we stopped at a red light a few blocks from home that V spoke up. I'm worried about you, Judy. Will you tell me what happened back there? I'm okay, I lied, keeping my eyes focused ahead of me. Guy was just a complete creep, shoving his hand in his pants, laughing at me. Don't know why Susie hired him in the first place. Not that it matters. I guess I don't have to worry about my shift tomorrow. Goosebumps suddenly raised on my skin as the realization of my own words sank in. I was done at Lizzie's. No more edits, no more shifts. That phase of my life had come screeching to a halt. It's okay, V tried to console me. I'll give Rita a call tomorrow and swing by Lizzie's to get your things. I doubt anyone will be fucking with your stuff after the show I made. V rubbed at her knuckles which had turned a deep shade of red even though she had wiped the blood off of them before getting in the van. More silence. If only the light had been green. Why was he laughing at you though? Did you say something to set him off? How would I know, V? Does it really matter? A guy was jerking on his dick asking me if I wanted to go for a ride. There, you happy? Well, I'm glad I got there when I did, V huffed a laugh. <laughs> if I hadn't, you'd probably be in cuffs facing murder charges. I knew V was trying to cheer me up, just like I knew she was also probing to see if I was really okay or simply throwing more bullshit at her. It was a waste of time. She knew I wasn't all right and had known that ever since she'd walked in on me in my den. My brow narrowed. What were you doing at Lizzie's anyway? Were you coming to check up on me? Because I could have saved you a trip if you would have trusted what I was telling you over the hollow all day. Rita called me earlier, she explained. She said the two of you talked and that you might need some company tonight. So I thought I'd swing by. Fuck. Why was I lashing out at her again? Hadn't I learned my fucking lesson? I'm sorry. Judy, I don't give a fuck that you're still pushing me. I told you before I could take it, and I will. But if you can tell Rita everything, why can't you tell me? Her voice was wavering. She was trying her best to control it and to continue projecting calmness and confidence, but my silence was slowly tearing her heart in two. Tell her, you fucking gonk. Don't. Not if you want to keep her. V, I just want to get home, take a bath, and wash this whole day away like it never happened. 
I know it's running away, but I got nowhere else left to run to after this. Can I do that, please? And then we can talk tomorrow? Why did my last words make me feel guilty? It would only be one more night. All right, V acquiesced. Look, Jude, I don't really know what I'm doing here. Everything you said last night has been running through my head all day, and I can't think about anything else. I don't want to push you and make you feel like you have to talk about it, but it hurts every second you're keeping all this from me. You can... V stopped herself and took a deep breath, fists tightening around the steering wheel as the light finally turned green. I know, V. You don't know, V said, the pain in her voice obvious. Just like I don't know what you're going through. You could tell Rita, and I'm glad you could do that. But you better believe I'm going to stay right outside your door just like I did last night until you're ready. I tightened my grip around my wreath. It was the last secret I could still cling to. How could she live knowing she would be sharing me with every freaking pervert in Night City for the rest of our lives? They would all know how I fucked, how I felt when I was being fucked. She would know. She'd know. How could I live with myself if she knew that? I know. An odd feeling descended over me as we pulled into the lot and V helped me up the stairs. A strange sense of finality with every step I took, as though my mantra, right foot, left foot, was nearing its inevitable end. It was comforting. Our apartment was quiet as we made our way inside. V turned on the lights while I kicked out of my shoes and shuffled toward the bathroom. I stopped in the doorway. V? Yeah, Jude. Goodbye. Goodbye. I forced the muscles in my face to form a smile. Thanks. For everything. Don't thank me, V said, returning my smile. I love you, and I'll take you any way I can get you. With a nod... I allowed the door to close shut, cutting off my view from the woman with the bright pink hair who'd stolen my heart years ago. V. The mercenary. My love. I stripped out of my clothes and tossed them haphazardly to the floor, ignoring the burning pain in my knuckles. It had been worth it, though, to reach deep down and find a glimmer of who I had once been. The old Judy. Once I was nude... I started the bath and waited until the water turned hot before putting the stopper in. While the tub filled up, I turned toward the mirror. There was no stranger staring back at me anymore. It was me, the new Judy. Liar, manipulator, whore, junkie, failure. Me. I turned away and glanced at my razor. Please just talk to me, Evie. Let me in. You don't gotta keep quiet and let those sickos win. I know you're stronger than that, and you're gonna prove them wrong. I'm here for you. Listen, I gotta run out and grab a couple things, but I'll be back in a few minutes. We'll talk then, okay? Later. Evelyn hadn't said goodbye. But I had. To both of them. The tips of my fingers were tingling as I picked it up and carefully climbed over the lip of the tub being careful not to slip. Thick clouds of steam rose from the water which climbed higher when I sat down, nearly submerging me. I glanced at the tattoo under my breast. I refused to sink. Another lie. I studied the razor, noticing several stray barbs of hair that had gotten stuck between the trio of blades carefully tucked away in the head. It was sharp, at least. I often nicked myself with it when I shaved my legs but so small, and a plastic handle too. Was this really what I would end things with? How had Evelyn managed this? It was a stupid question, especially since I'd seen the aftermath of what she had done. The deep cuts that traced from wrist to elbow on both wrists had been anything but delicate. She'd snapped the plastic casing that held the blades in place and had driven the business end deep into her flesh, probably poking at the bone before tearing through her arteries, spilling herself out into the very same tub. To have been able to do the same thing to her other wrist, she'd made her intent clear.
pills would have been easier, but V had tossed them all down the drain except for the aspirin. I could try to throw back the whole bottle and see what happened, but that would probably land me right back in the hospital with nothing more than a bad headache. And this time, I'd have no lie to hide behind. No. This was the only option I had left. And if Evelyn could do it, so could I. But fuck. I didn't want this to hurt. The water continued rushing from the spout and had risen past my knees. I sat up and turned the temperature up as high as it would go. Even though my body had quickly adapted to the heat, the jet quickly turned scalding hot. It would have to do. God help me. Judy, this is your abuelo. I know it's uh, been a long time since we last spoke. Too long. But please call us back when you get this. Your abuela and I are worried about you. I'm... Sorry I lost my temper. I was just scared of losing you like I did your mother, and it seemed like you were slipping away one piece at a time each day no matter how hard I tried. It felt like I was about to fail twice. Look, if this girl is still around pouring poison in you, please push it and her away. I spoke with Alejandro yesterday. I hope you remember him. You were always throwing rocks at his house, the little gaunt that you were. He has our group home, Judy, where a few others from our old town still live. I asked him to call you and see what he could do to help you. Please listen to him. Please listen to us. Get help, even if you never speak to us again. We love you. Goodbye. Arm shaking, I brought my wrist directly under the spout, wincing as my skin burned. My heart was pounding. That would help, right? It would make the blood come out of me faster. The razor crept closer, its metal edges reflecting the light from above. As hot as I was, a mixture of sweat and steam dribbled down my brow, and the cold blade sent a shiver up my spine when it grazed against the thin layer of skin protecting my arteries. Why did they have to laugh at me? Ew! Close your fucking legs, Alvarez. Are you trying to stink up the whole town? Hey, everyone. Pinch your noses quick. Alvarez smells like dead fish again. I gripped my teeth and began to push. For a moment, I almost laughed out loud, thinking the blade was far too embedded into the head and all I'd have to show for it was a small bruise in the morning. But I gasped as a sharp prick of pain poked at my wrists followed by a tiny drop of blood that slowly bubbled from the puncture I'd made. It was a pathetic start. Even a bug could draw more blood. The vein I was aiming for pulsed with a frantic urgency. Why? Why the fuck did she love me? She didn't know what I was. Didn't know how much I... Fuck. Why had it felt so good? Why couldn't they have just killed me and been done with it all? Why had Cindy picked me out of all the other kids? Why was I like this? Tears mixed with sweat as I pushed even harder, causing the droplet of blood to thicken before leaking down my arm and getting caught in the jet. It spilled into the tub and swirled about. Pretty. The way colors mixed. But even though it hurt, I knew this wasn't going to get the job done. All I'd managed to do was break the skin and lift a thin white flap up. Sniffling, I pulled the razor away, examining the tool I'd chosen to end my life with. A fucking moisturizing strip. Christ, could I do anything right? I pressed the head up against the wall and applied pressure. The plastic casing snapped apart, sending shards of plastic flying across the room and crudely disposing of the only barrier that had kept the blade from sinking into my skin. The first two blades were still pressed firmly against one another, but the last one, its sharp edge glinted in the light, promising relief. All I needed to do now was finish it. I stuck the metal tip back inside of the wound I'd made. I pushed again and hissed as a thicker rivulet of blood streamed down my arm. One sharp, unrelenting jerk of my arm and it would all finally end. 
V would be free to find someone who wasn't like me. Do it, you fucking coward. Let her go. I choked back a sob, realizing I was too afraid of how much it would hurt. Maybe Evelyn hadn't been aware when she'd done it, lost in that catatonic state she'd never woken up from. God damn it, I whispered, my voice breaking. Maybe I could do this slowly. After all, it wasn't like I had to spill myself all at once. The body only had so much blood in it, and a slow leak would do the job just as effectively. Might even help put me to sleep easier. Ignoring the sound of water spilling onto the tile, a high-pitched squeak escaped my throat as I slowly dragged the razor along my skin, leaving a horrible burning in its wake. More blood flowed. My arm was coated in it now. Fuck, it was so bright. The water was turning pink, but I was still shaking, still hurting. Why wouldn't the pain stop? I just had to do it. I'd already come this far, closed off everything around me, said my goodbye. It was time. The muscles in my forearm tensed as I braced myself, preparing for the horrible stab of pain I was about to inflict upon myself. The last pain I would ever feel. I believe in you, Judy. Why? My face twisted in agony as my hand refused to budge those last few inches. The door suddenly opened, and I already knew what I would see as I turned toward her. The razor dropped from my hand and landed in the overflowing tub with a plop as an enormous wave of relief crashed over me. Judy! You see... see what I am? I can't even kill myself right. I broke and wailed at the top of my lungs. V lunged forward, snatching a towel off the floor and wrapping me in her arms, crying alongside me as 18 years of agony finally spilled out into the open.